Father in heaven, your people are awaiting a word from you. And oh God, I pray that you will use this vessel the way that only you can to communicate that which you desire your people to hear this day. Oh God, may we grow strong in you. May we learn to trust you and be faithful in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, a happy Sabbath is extended to each and every one of you. We are so happy to see those of you who come out and some faces we haven't seen in a while. Welcome. No COVID-19 took us all for a loop. We didn't expect it, but God has brought us safely through thus far. I want to thank Brother Roderick for his more than kind words of introduction. And he spoke about my memory as a child. I tell him now that some of the things he spoke about, I don't remember. <laughs> But God is good, nevertheless. We are thankful also for the young men who have blessed our hearts with special music today. From from Sabbath school, even up or through the divine worship. Let us pray that they continue to yield themselves to God's service and that they live lives to his honor and glory and allow him to direct their path. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Moss, of course, last week we know that he was on vacation and his time has extended a little. And that has made room for me here today. Let us continue to pray for him that he allows himself to be used by God to do a great work. The message today is entitled a people of hope, a people of hope. We of all people should be a people of hope. We should be a people of hope. Firstly, because God is unchanging. He is the same yesterday today and forever. We should be a people of hope because God's word is unchanging. Number 23 verse 19 says that God is not man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. And then ask the question, has he said and will not do? Or has he spoken and he will not make good? Of course, every word of God is sure. It is yea. It's amen. Today, I am thankful for the assurances and promises that God gives us in his word. Promises and assurances 
to keep us. No matter what it is that we may face. I'm reminded of the passage in Psalms chapter 46. Psalms chapter 46 was one that says that God is our refuge and our strength and says a very present help in time of trouble. So God isn't far away. He's right there, present, a present up in time of trouble. And so even though some things may have shifted in our lives, you no, know, he may lose a job. Or he may have had to pathways with some possessions. You know, God is a very present help. When we had the job, we couldn't wait till payday. Couldn't wait till the end of the month. That is when we had the job. Some may not have worked for a whole year. And God has kept you all that time. He's a very present help. Though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried away in the midst of the sea. That's why the word of God says we not ought not to put our trust in princes and in the son of man in whom there's no help. You know, as I was driving home from church last week, I saw a particular political organization roaming the streets, traversing the streets. And I believe I saw the same thing again this morning. But the reality is we can't put confidence in them. Our confidence must be in God. Psalm 121 tells us that I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. And then I ask the question, from whence cometh my help? Says my help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. And it goes on, he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel will not slumber nor sleep. So, listen. Whatever you may go going through, you may be going through today. Remember, God is your keeper. God is a very present help. God can fix it. Says, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. It says, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night, says, the Lord shall preserve thee from all much evil. All evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in, even from this time forth, and even forevermore. Now, some of us may be worrying about the changes we had to make because of COVID-19. I'll tell you one thing. Some of those changes that we made, we ought to have made long time. I'm reminded of the passage in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. You know, sometimes as we go through life situations, things may not go our way. We find that some people who were once in our life decide not to be there anymore. 
Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, all things went together for good. To those who love the Lord and to them who are the cause according to his purpose. So just be reminded that if God is your keeper, no evil shall be before you. Verse 31 says, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Verse 32 says, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So if God Gave us a son that we may have eternal life. Is there anything else we may need that you think God think it too hard to give it to us? If God sees it will benefit us, if God sees it will be good for us, he does it. Psalm 84 verse 10 says, no good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. Verse 35 of Romans chapter 8 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? It says, Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Verse 36 says, As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep. For the slaughter. Verse 37, and that's my favorite verse. Verse 37 says, Nay, in all these things, whatever may come our way, that may be contrary. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. Verse 37 says, For I am persuaded. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to come, nor things present. There is absolutely nothing that can separate us for the love of Christ, who is in Christ Jesus our Lord. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, beginning verse 15. God's word gives us hope for the day and tomorrow. John chapter 14, verse, beginning verse 15. Verse 15 to 18 says, If ye shall ask anything, so, sorry, beginning verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever verse 17 says even the spirit of truth which the world cannot receive because it's seen him not neither know them but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and be in you verse 18 says I will not leave you comfortless. 
I will come to you. God promises to be with us. Whatever our situation may be, God has promised he will not leave us comfortless. Even though he's gone away, even though we cannot see him, he promised through his Holy Spirit that he'll be right here with us. Talking about people of hope today. Our vision for ourselves is finite. It is dark. It is cloudy. God's vision for us is infinite. God speaks and it is done. He commands and it stands fast. God calls things into existence. Like the disciples of all, we, be, we can become so focused on our little world that we fail to see or get excited and prepare for the future. To many of us, preparing for the future involves going to school. It may involve deciding what career you're going to choose. It may involve getting or creating employment. Savings. It may involve investments. And you know what? Nothing is wrong with none of those things. We ought to do all of those things. And they are all prudent actions. However, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says that we ought to seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it says that all these things will be added unto us. Our first work should be seeking God. Our plan involved being successful down here. God's plans involve saving us from eternal death. Saving us from the destruction that is to come to this earth. His plan involves saving us from the lake of fire that is reserved for the devil and his angels. In John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. He says, Ye believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house. Many mansions. Says, If it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. He says, and if I go, I'll come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. Jesus' plan involves rescuing us from this earth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. It says that I have not seen the eye, the eye, the seeing eye. I have not seen, nor have ever heard, nor have it entered into our hearts the things that God has prepared for those who love him. You know, we get excited about a lot of things. 
But when we talk about heaven to many, it may seem like a fairy tale. But know for sure, Jesus Christ is coming back. The Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. It says, and there was no more sea. Verse 4. It says, and God shall wipe away how many tears? All tears from their eyes. And there shall be what? No death. No more sorrow. No crying. Neither pain. Neither shall there be so, so, no crying, no pain. Says for the former things are what? All these things are going to be passed away. This is the heaven that God is talking about. You know, I find it interesting that this very week, NASA, NASA, They would have landed on Mars with the uh, space rover that they call Perseverance. Yeah, that's the name of it. And when you think about it, Mars is some is almost three. 100 million miles away. You can imagine that. Almost 300 million miles away. And of course, NASA is based in the USA. And they're not the only ones up there. Apparently, China is also hovering around Mars, as well as the United Arab Emirates. They're up there too, flying around. But the USA actually landed, and I've sent back some pictures. And you know, one of their goals, or, or, or some of their, 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 their goals, is for man to eventually go there. Of course, they send the, 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 the rovers now, right? But the, 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 the entire focus is for man to go there as well. And they live and work up there. And they said they want, one of their goals is to create oxygen out of here, this now, out of thin air. So man could live and work up there. But listen, anything where we go, any place where we go, Sin will be going there also. Because when we try to fix one problem, the next one comes. You know, because the Bible says that in Jeremiah that our hearts are deceitful. And it's desperately wicked. But God planned for us is to not take us someplace where we have to make it habitable. God's plan for us is to take us far beyond Mars. In fact, 
in this very passage of Revelation chapter 21, it lets us know that the struggles that we go through here, in the new world, that wouldn't be happening no more. No more crying. God is going to create a new world order. You know, we wonder what's happening. We don't have to so much focus on what's happening down here. What we have to remember is God is in control. The next new world order that will occur is what God established. That's the next big thing on the horizon. When we look at the image in Daniel chapter 2. The next big thing on the horizon is the return of Jesus Christ. In fact, in Titus chapter 2 verse 13, Titus refers to the coming of Jesus Christ. Said, as the blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The coming of Jesus, saints, is something that we ought to get excited about. It is something that we ought to be planning for. In Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24, Jesus gave signs about the destruction of Jerusalem that occurred in AD 70 and signs that indicate that the end of the end is near. Signs that indicate that the end is near all around us. Even persons in the secular world know this. That's why you have folk trying to go to Mars, but that wouldn't work. That, that ain't gonna work. That is not the solution. In Matthew chapter 24, among the signs that Jesus gave were signs about the religious deceptions. He spoke about wars and rumors of wars. He talked about famines, earthquakes, pestilences. I believe we don't have to look far to know what these things are all about. It's in our news. But verse 14 of Matthew chapter 24, he says, This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness. And then the end will come. Some of us are wondering what God is doing. While COVID-19 is going on, the gospel is being preached, friends. It's going around the world. Every, all over the airwaves, the gospel is being preached. Jesus is soon to come. When we look at verse 36 of Matthew chapter 24, Talking about the second coming, he says, But of that day and hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but he says, But my Father only. No one knows when Jesus will return, but we can be sure he's coming back. He's coming. Jesus gave us the admonition in verse 42. He says, watch therefore, for you know not what are your Lord will come. Then again in verse 44, it says, 
Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man coming. Jesus is saying, watch, be alert. Be aware of what's happening around you. But the seven, it says, for as it was in the days of Noah, they will say, so shall it also be with the, when so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Say they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were giving in marriage. They did not go on their mind. They didn't know nothing. And then the flood came and take them all away. That is the same it is in our day. Folk are doing what they please. Whatever feels good, they're doing it. Whatever is fashionable, they're doing it. But Jesus is saying to us, watch, be ready. I'm coming at an hour you do not know of. And I often wonder why Jesus didn't, wasn't more specific when he spoke with his disciples. Because he warned them to be ready. And it has been some more, some 2,000 years since he made that pronouncement. And he has not come yet. My mind went on the passage in 2 Peter chapter 3, where it talks about the day of the Lord. Say one day with the Lord is it, as a thousand years. And a thousand years as one day. You know, we operate in time. And our time is brief. No. If by reason of strength, we may make it to 70 years. Some a little lower. But you know what? It's not guaranteed to us. I remember one time ago, we looked in the newspaper at the obituary section. And we looked at the faces and we concluded that we don't know the, pers the, the persons they're listed because they're old. And we were young. But now you look at the newspaper and you could say, we don't know these people because they're young people. The young people seem to be dying almost as fast as the old. Jesus says, no one knows the day nor the hour. Think about it. I asked the question of why he wasn't specific when he gave the message to his disciples. The message that Jesus is coming again is for every age. For every age. A day with this Lord is as, is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Our time here is limited. If God told his disciples, I'm coming in 2,000 years, who will prepare? Who will prepare? 
But the fact is, our time here is brief. So the message is, Jesus is coming soon. When you look at these verses here, verse 40 says, uh, two shall be in the field, the one taken, the other left. Right? Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one taken, the other left. Death is coming. We don't know when it will happen. You see, one day Jesus will come in the clouds. No one knows when that day will be. We believe by the signs that he's given that that will be soon. But we do not know how soon. What we do know though, is our time here is finite. The time to make up our minds to follow Christ is right now. That's what we are sure of. Because we do not know when death will come and take us. Whenever death come and take us, Christ has come for us. Will we be ready? That's why Jesus says to us, be ready. Be watchful. Because you do not know when your hour will come. Says, if the good man of, of the house knew when the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. If you believe Jesus is coming for you at 20, your life will be different. If you believe at 30, he's coming for you. Your life will be different. But if you believe it's so far off, if you believe it's far away, you're going to be caught unawares. The time to be ready is now. Verse 45, it says, who is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord had made ruler over his household? Now he's talking about how we ought to be living, waiting on Christ's appearance. You now God has given each one of us responsibilities. Responsibilities to our households. Responsibilities in his work. Responsibilities on our jobs. How are we conducting ourselves? You know, some of us, because we feel we're big and bad and no one could do us nothing, we believe that we could treat people however we feel like and get away with it. But listen, God is taking record. Right? God is taking record. Says, who is a faithful and a wise servant? Says, whatever God has placed within your charge, you do it dutifully. Of course, God has a reward for you. But if you decide that you're going to abuse your authority, and treat people any way you can, any way you feel like it. God has a word for you. Says the Lord of that servant shall come, verse 50. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day where he looketh not for him. And in an hour that he is not aware of. And shall cut him asunder. And appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. It says there shall be weeping. A nation of teeth. 
you know, someone came to Jesus in Matthew chapter 22, I believe it's verse 37, asked him, what is the greatest commandment? And of course, the answer, love the Lord with all your mind, your heart, and your soul. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as, you, as yourself. Once we, when we are seeking God's kingdom first, and we learn to love him, we, we recognize that we show our love for God by how we treat one another. In Matthew chapter 25, we find the parable of the 10 virgins. Really these 10 virgins are God's church. God's church who are waiting for his second coming. God told this parable that let us know that we ought to be watchful. We ought to be ready. And that we ought to use our time wisely. You now some of us, we believe it's all about making money. Going home. Doing what you feel like. Watching TV all night. But we should be using our every opportunity to improve upon ourselves. Study God's word. Seek his face. When the time comes, he should be coming to church. Whether the church is virtual or in person, we should be using our time wisely. We had 10 virgins. Five were described as wise. Five were foolish. They said they were waiting on the bridegroom. But when he showed up, we find five. They recognized all of a sudden that they were deficient. They hadn't used their time wisely. The time to prepare, which is now. Of course, we know that oil represented the Holy Spirit. Jesus imparts the Holy Spirit to us. Day by day, as we read from his word, as we seek him through prayer. The parable after that talked about the talents. There were three servants. It says that there was a man, he was going on a far journey. And he called the servants. Verse 14. And he entrusted to them talents that they must invest, use, until he returned. The first one took, received five talents. He took it. He invested it. He gained five more. The second one, he did what likewise. He received two talents. But he did the same thing. He invested it and he gained two more. But the last one, he only got one. But first of all, let me deal with the first two. The one who had received the five talents, verse 21 says, after learning that he had got five more, says, his Lord said unto him, well done, 
Thou good and faithful servant. Thou has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Right? Unto the one who received the two talents. Basically, the master told him the very same message. So it doesn't matter what you receive, it's what you do with it. And some would equate this talent with money. Others may equate it with spiritual gifts, but God has entrusted his treasure in each one of us. How are we using our time, talent, treasures, temple to advance his work? All of this is a part of preparing for Christ's return. Lastly, we look at the, at the servant who had received the one talent. And basically, he took that one talent and he dug and he hid it in the earth. But you know, rather than him using it in the master's service, he came with stories, I know thou art a hard man. And, you know, someone penned the words of the song by Roderick. Since I started for the kingdom. Since his grace. No, since my life, he controls. Says, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. That servant that received the one talent, he never experienced that testimony. When we come to know Jesus Christ, we recognize it's not God's will that any of us should perish. It's not his will for any of us to perish. In fact, it's his will that we all come to repentance. Listen, God gave his son that you and I may have eternal life. So the more we come to Jesus, the more we know him, the more we love him. So his assessment of who God was, was completely false. He used the expression, I know. But he was wrong. He was dead wrong. And not only was he dead wrong, but he lost big. He lost big. God has placed eternity within all of our grasps. His desire is that we experience eternal life. Finally, we have the story of the sheep and the goats. No, there was some. Jesus says, I was hungry. You know. And you gave me food. I was thirsty. And you gave me drink. I was a stranger. You took me in. Naked. And you clothed me. In other words, as we prepare for Christ's return, we are people of compassion. 
as Jesus walked this earth, as Jesus healed, as Jesus ministered, we read all through the gospels that he was motivated by compassion. He had compassion. But of course, when he, the goats on the other hand, that is what they lack. Compassion. Of course, for the sheep, God says, come, verse 34, Matthew chapter 25, he says, come me, blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But to the doors on the left hand, his words would be, depart from me. He cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Brothers and sisters, we are a people of hope because God has placed eternity within our reach. reach. It is God's desire for each and every one of us to experience eternal life. It is God's desire that each and every one of us live forever with him. He is not willing for any of us to perish. God has granted to us great, precious promises. Where do we will be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us? Saints of God, by God's grace, let us be watchful. Let us be ready. That when he comes, we will hear, well done. Good. Faithful servants, enter into the joy of thy Lord. If that is your desire, won't you stand with me as we pray? Father in heaven, we are so thankful. Because you loved us with an everlasting love. We are so thankful, O oh God, that you place eternity within our grasp. It is your desire that we all inherit everlasting life. Oh God, may we not be so caught up by the cares of this life, by the distractions of the evil one. But oh God, let us be watchful let us be ready, O oh God, by your grace, that whenever you come or call for us, that we are ready, O oh God, to meet you in peace. O oh God, I pray that this be the experience of each one of us today. May we not put off living for you, but O oh God, may we seek you day by day. And allow you, O oh God, to keep us. We know you are the one who can keep us from falling. Your word states that when we are in your hands, no one can pluck us from your hands. Your word says that those that come to you you will not cast out. Oh God, I pray that you would save us eternally. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.